had expected I would talk to you for 20 minutes. And if we had 20 minutes, I have less than that now. By the end of a 20 minute talk, 1,220 people will be blind in our world. Because as you may know, every second, somebody goes blind. Every minute, a child goes blind. Of the over 512,000 children who will go blind in 2016, half of them will not live to see their next birthday. Some will be killed by the same condition that caused their blindness. Others will be killed because we don't have an inclusive society. Our people don't know how to take care of the blind. For those who survived their blindness, especially in developing countries like Nigeria, where nine out of every ten blind person lives, life can be hell. If an adult goes blind, a child drops out of school to lead the blind adult, to learn to beg. Every day this child struggles with hopelessness. Many of them have lost their youth. You will see Sylvia leading the father. On the next slide, let's point to Sylvia. You will see the swelling on her face. That swelling on her face is not the mark of the beast. It is the beginning of the next generation of blindness. That is a nodule caused by the microfilaria worm Oncoseca volvolus, river blindness. And that has caused the blindness of many people. Cross River State is an endemic community for river blindness. But the good news I want to share with you is that fortunately, little Sylvia will not have to live with blindness. The pharmaceutical giant Make Sharp and Dome as corporate social responsibility donated medicine freely for the world so that we can prevent blindness from river blindness. But that's not how Sylvia's blindness will be presented. Sylvia will not go blind because there is a volunteer in her village free of charge, who makes sure everybody infected with river blindness gets their annual dose of the medicine. There is an association between blindness and poverty. In a high-tech economy where precise vision is needed to develop the software, the blind, the visually impaired are excluded. And there is a vicious cycle where poverty causes blindness and poverty becomes a consequence of blindness. So it's either your blindness is caused by poverty or your blindness will make you poor. In Nigeria, the National Prevalence Study for Blindness gave us a prevalence of blindness of 1.5 million people blind in Nigeria. That's just a little below the population of Bielsa State. So we can create a whole state of blind people. For every one person that is blind, there are six to seven other people living with severe visual impairment. And that number for Nigeria stands at about nine million. Think about it. That's the population of some African or European countries. What makes Nigeria's blindness completely unacceptable and even obscene is that 85% of the people living with blindness in Nigeria are avoidably blind. These are blindness that we could have prevented or blindness that we have the know-how and technology to change. That's what makes it sad. The WHO International Classification of Diseases defines blindness as inability to see at a dis to count fingers at a distance of three meters without the best in the better eye with the best optical correction. 
The makers of that definition made one assumption that everybody who is visually impaired will have the optical correction. Glasses. Just a pair of glasses can prevent blindness. In Cross River State, the leading cause of blindness is error of refraction. A pair of glasses can change everything. In Nigeria, error of refraction is responsible for 57% of our visual impairment as a country. As a country, the leading cause of blindness is cataract. Cataract. Cataract, which can be reversed just by surgery. This white thing that you see in the eye, you will not see it in other advanced countries. Because now cataract surgery is not done to reverse blindness as we do it here. It is done to prevent visual impairment. Next to cataract in our environment is glaucoma. After glaucoma in Nigeria is trachoma, responsible for 15% of Nigeria's blindness. Staggering figure. When you consider that trachoma was eliminated from Europe in the 19th century, trachoma is a disease that is associated with the lack of portable water and a poor environmental sanitation. It's not something that should be mentioned in Nigeria. But today, it is the third leading cause of blindness in our country. The emerging blindness cause which will take us by storm, is diabetes. Diabetes mellitus epidemic is upon us. It's expected that in the next decade, the percentage of people with diabetes will increase by 109%. By 2025, there will be over 500 million people living with blindness. In Europe, in, in the Middle East, it is a status symbol. If you are not a diabetic, you haven't made it. But it comes with blindness. It's going to be the leading cause of blindness in the working age group. With profound socioeconomic significance. Our socioeconomically marginalized population are at particular risk. We have the tools to eliminate avoidable blindness. But it, it persists because of inequity in access to eye care. It persists because we have not released the human compassion that is necessary to make a difference. In 1996, I turned down several jobs outside the country to accept a job in the University of Calabar and University of Calabar Teaching Hospital at a salary less than 200% of the offers I had. When I arrived at the hospital, there was a a blind beggar as a permanent fixture at the hospital gate. For two years, I walked past this man, but I never saw him. I saw his plate. Occasionally, I stopped by and dropped a coin, but I never saw the man. One afternoon, my wife didn't come to pick me up on time, so I stopped by the gate and had a chat with the man. I just wanted to know his name. Usually he had a lot of sores, so you didn't want to stay there for too long. But I stopped and asked his name, and I was impressed by his diction. His English was impeccable. I suddenly realized that this man hadn't always been poor. He had diabetes. He developed cataract. He lost his job, and when he lost his job, his wife left him, and his wall came crumbling apart. He moved to the hospital gate. He begged for food to eat and begged for medicines. It wasn't long. Many of the doctors knew him. Many of the doctors knew Big Joe, so he could get free consultation on top of it. So I invited Big Joe to the hospital and did cataract surgery on him free of church. Big Joe came for only one post-op visit and disappeared. Six months later, the young man that walked into my office to say thank you to me, I did not recognize him. He said, doctor, you don't recognize me? I said, no. Where have we met? He said, doctor, 
I am Big Joe. I brought my wife, I brought my child to come and say thank you to you. One act of kindness that cost me nothing reunited a family, changed the economic circumstance of this man, and made impact in his community. In 1993, I led the team that conducted the Enugu State Survey of Blindness and Visual Impairment. On the last day of that trip, I was involved in a road traffic accident. That day, I was the only person who came out of the wreckage. The people who rescued my body from the wreckage forgot my left ear. That day, I lost many things. I lost friends. Four of my friends perished in that accident with the driver of the vehicle. I lost many things. But I found something. I found human compassion. There were strangers on the roadside who were willing to do everything to me alive. They carried my body. They did everything, took me to the hospital where I had treatment. I have had several treatments. I have had a lot of reconstructive surgeries. In the accident, my jaw was crushed and mangled. So my jaw stands today as a tribute to an outstanding maxillofacial surgeon. I've had many reconstructions. I was a senior registrar in ophthalmology. That means the rank just below consultant. But when I was released from hospital, if I had to work to pay for my bill, it would have taken me 15 years of saving all my income to pay for my hospital bill. Because like 99.2% of the Nigerian population who are not covered in the National Health Insurance Scheme, I had no insurance. I could not pay. When I went to the medical director of the hospital to negotiate how I would work for him to settle my bill, he looked at me and said, Dr. Nkanga, I'm talking about Dr. Disio Konkwa of blessed memory. He looked at me and said, Dr. Nkanga, we are happy you are alive. I will settle the bill. A man's kindness, the kindness that we have in our society, wrote off my bill. He gave me back my life. When I was released from the hospital, I determined that I will make my life count. We have human compassion. It is from this sea of human compassion that I hope we can work together to prevent and eliminate avoidable blindness. The World Health Organization has a program drawn up for elimination of avoidable blindness based on a strategic tripod of human resource development, infrastructure and technology, and the development of uh, specific targeted disease action. But what is lacking is human passion and compassion to drive this program that was drawn by a committee of experts. Nigeria had signed on to this November 2007, but since then, health sector allocation has continued to dwindle. Unless we rise together and shout from the rooftop, we will continue to have this appalling blindness indices. We have what it takes, but we need passion. Nigeria as a country does not have a diabetic retinopathy uh, uh, screening and treatment program, but we have one in Cross River State. We have one in the teaching hospital. We screen people for free. We expect that with a prevalence of 6.5% of diabetes in our city, in Calabar we have 10,000 people living with diabetes. 
We have 2,500 people registered in our registry. Last year, only 534 came out for free screening. If you here can join us, tell 100 people in a month who have diabetes to come and screen their eyes, you will be the real champion. How many people? What I discovered after my accident, which I must mention before I sit down, is that our driver had visual impairment and was not wearing his glasses. Our driver also had diabetes. It's possible that a pair of glasses would have saved his life. How many people, when you enter a cab, ask your driver whether he does wear glasses? How many people remember? How many Nigerian drivers, if you go to Etimedem Park, will wear their glasses? We can make a difference. Join me. When you meet people, ask them, have you had your annual eye check? Have you had your annual diabetes screening? Everybody should do it once in a year. And everybody that has diabetes, you can help invite them. Let us make our lives count. Thank you.